Okay, and uh, now for the for the next talk, um, I'm very happy to uh, you two former colleagues of mine, uh, Helge Taubert and Simon Brunner. Um, actually, um, Simon, I know for quite a long time, um, even before we became um, colleagues at Züge. Um, he was working as a master student here in Hamburg and uh, implemented the teach. Oh, sorry. Um, and um, implemented um, the GCP implementation for the GNSC um, <laughs> network stack. So quite an achievement. And um, then um, at a summit a couple of years ago, we, we, we met again and I managed um, to uh, suck him into, into Züge. So we got, became um, colleagues. And actually, um, Hege was one of the responsible guys um, for me being uh, becoming part of, of, of Züge. Uh, and I'm uh, happy to, to say that he was not the reason why I left Zug. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, Helga is uh, a very experienced um, embedded software architect and consultant um, with Zug for how long? 15 years? 16 years. And um, I was also very uh, in the happy position of Zug as um, a part of the project where we used um, <laughs> So. After after some small setup issues, uh, I guess we are ready now. Is everybody able to hear me? Okay. Then me too. Yes. Okay. Then let's start. Um, since Riot is mostly used in academia, at least from my point of view, who of you would like to see more commercial usage of Riot? Hands in the air. Okay, quite a few people. So um, we tell today a story from the last year for where we built a software for our customer based on Riot. And during the development, we decided against the continuation uh, with uh, the Riot base and for the reasoning of that. Uh, this is the topic of our talk. But before we dive into, um, I brought my colleague Helge. He was on a project, I was not. So he can tell more about us uh, compared to me. And yeah, who are we, who are we working for? Yeah, so we are working for Zürke, an engineering company here in Germany and uh, at the moment all over the world. We are developing solutions, devices, software, web portals, data apps and data science solutions for our customers. And they usually expect us to do that in a highly efficient manner. So I'm Helga, well, I introduced my, myself already, working 16 years for Zürke. As a technical lead software architect, I don't know, I think I work with 12 to 15 embedded operating systems, including Riot. Yeah, um, and for me, most of you guys sh and uh, yeah, else should know me already because as I was introduced before, I'm basically the TCP guy. <laughs> I am a member of the Riot community for around about the last seven years, I guess, and work for Zuke for three years until now. And yeah, as said before, you were in the in a Riot-based project. Could you explain us the project or the issue we are trying to solve for our customer? Sure. Uh, nothing too surprising. It was a battery-powered IoT device sending sensor data to the cloud. Hey, no amazing faces here. <laughs> okay, that's true. Pretty standard challenge. So we thought, hey, come on, let's solve that by just using standard stuff. Okay, then uh, just as project for us go, uh, one of the first things we do is some kind of proof of concept, I guess, or what I've heard, this is the point where you came in. And let's talk about a little bit about the proof of concept, which was riot based. Uh, what did it do, what did it not do, and explain a little bit our setup here. Yeah, no problem. So this uh, project was for a small startup, money coming from a rather elderly couple having earned their life by hard work, but they were interested in getting more of their money, hopefully. So uh, they asked us to do that proof of concept for them. We did that with Riot. Oli was involved in that using C. We had an Azure backend, which basically just had a small server uh, receiving files from us. So we put the sensor data into a file and used the modem 
feature there was to just upload that file and a very simple UI to show, okay, the data is here. And yes, that elderly couple say, hey, okay, it's working, let's go on. Okay, since the proof of concept was a success and the project moved on, um, then everything is all right. Everything worked well, right? Right? Not quite. So uh, it was not only a small budget, but only a very small time frame. And I think only you, you have a full time job for that doing that. So it was done uh, under high pressure and it really didn't work at the first. So we had uh, huge problems with reliability for the proof of concept in the field. Uh, and while lots of that stuff was solved by adding additional features to error handling and recovery me mechanisms and things like watchdogs and kind, uh, there also were some bugs around uh, Riot features. Yeah, not Riot itself, but our usage of them. Probably our fault, but uh, still it made me somehow think how, how can it happen that some pretty easy things like task flags and usage of timers went so wrong. Yeah, so there was a little bit of doubt in me at that point in time, but still the proof of concept worked out. Okay, and then uh, after the proof of concept, usually additional requirements set in. So if we are moved from or the, the requirements that would go beyond the proof of concept scope, what, will, what were these in this case? Okay, so in the first step, we were just wanted to, to show, okay, it's actually working, getting the sensor data to the cloud and showing useful information for the end customer. Uh, but nobody wanted others to be able to tinker with that device. So we wanted to have a secure bootloader. Okay. Next thing was, Nobody wanted to share that data with the whole of the world without paying money for it. So we needed secure communication. And today, no IoT device with probably a working software update as a very, very first feature. Yeah, and uh, of course, if you can see that, this was our chosen hardware. Yeah, so we went for SDM. Again, not uh, a big surprise. One of the main reasons there was the security features they offer, all the software support they have. And in 2021, availability of a certain number of devices on the market. So we could actually build something. Okay, so that was the base we started with. And this base also included a secure bootload of an STM. Um, so we thought, okay, we have been using Riot Boot before. How does it look like? What should we do? And there were a few things which were in benefit of the STM because it actually had pretty good support for the hardware we were using, which was not the in Riot Boot. Uh, so it was a likely decision to go for the STM bootloader. Yeah, but from, I mean, that missing hardware key handling, there could be solutions for that. That doesn't really rule out using uh, Riot itself. You could, for example, use a Riot-based firmware to flash with the ST bootloader, or just use the ST library to extend Riot boot. I mean, it's pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And I think many of the team would have really had have fun with that. Yeah, but do you remember where the money came from? Yeah. Yeah, so sorry, no way for doing that. Okay. Okay, then um, just don't take a look at things from the firmware side. There's the cloud side as well. Let's take a look at the Azure ecosystem. Yeah, so the AK, uh, Azure ecosystem was a close guess for that because the, the backend developer was an Azure guy with us. Uh, so yes, we had a look there. They offer lots of SDKs for the embedded sector. Uh, they go with Radix as they are now known Azure Autos. Uh, it's all look good because that's an address which is highly mature on the market. And then I didn't find anything about doing a firmware update. So we went to our guys from Microsoft and asked, hey, what's up there? And they said, yes, 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 for sure. We have something in private beta. So I said, private beta, I need to go in production in five, mi five months. Oh, uh, yes, we will manage to be in public better until then. OK, 
okay, guys, do you trust your public better? Oh, no. Okay, sorry, then I can't trust you. So that wasn't a good choice for us for that point of view. Uh, but for sure, we had a closer look also on the solution from Riot. So Simon, what's the state there? Uh, the state there is we have support for over-the-air updates by implementing uh, the suit protocol. And the nice thing is, or the right community favors uh, standards over vendor-specific solutions, like for example, the Azure one. So the point here is uh, it's still in specification. It is existing and it works, but it's not finally standardized yet. But from its, um, its, its abilities, it's a good fit for the Riot ecosystem as well. So I could probably believe in being that more stable than the Microsoft solution, or well, that would be fine. But what did I need to do to use that? Can, can I use that readily? Is there something in the cloud review available for that? Uh, for now, not. Um, but I looked before, the chair of the suit working group at the IETF is actually a Microsoft employee. So there's a good chance to have some adaptation in the future. And for now, you have to host it yourself. The large ecosystems don't actually support suit as far as I'm aware of. OK, so that's future talk, and it costs effort and money. If you need to host it yourself, of course. Yeah, so but, uh, it but, wasn't. Yeah. But wait, wait. Wait. There's, uh, we have actually a quite good example uh, showing how the suit update works and how to perform it and to basically all the stuff you need to roll out an update. So. You can you can at least uh, use the process and it's tested regularly. Well, good so far. So probably need to take another look at that for the next time I have this kind of decision to take. Okay, but um, since Azure does not offer what we need, and we uh, basically looked at a problem mostly from a cloud backend side, what were the other contenders we finally um, chose to use then in the project and to continue with it? Yeah, so our next stop was AWS. Uh, the cloud guy wasn't too happy about that, but we convinced him. Um, so they have everything in stock, uh, what we needed. Low footprint embedded S3 Atlas was already mentioned. Uh, you may not like that they bought it, but that's the way. Uh, there was logging, there was even a library for uh, control of our modem, secure communication all in there really ready backend solution for the software update and all the fleet management we needed to do and a suitable device agent in order uh, to integrate that into our device. So that was our decision to go that way. Okay, um, this has, I think this has a large caveat. A, at this point, if you choose this, you have a massive vendor login. Depends if this is uh, an issue for our customers or not. Yeah. So. Usual experience is uh, first requirement is, oh no, no, vendor login, please. Okay, is, this is going to cost you this amount of money. Okay, no problem with the vendor login. Just go on, we don't mind. And in this case, it was a, a startup which absolutely had no problem with uh, going towards that solution, not even having really proven their business case at that point in moment. So they really had other problems. Okay, so the choice was obviously sticking with AWS and free Atlas uh, because it basically promised us less effort in the doing. Did this work out this way? Was it really as smooth as they said? Uh, sorry, real life hits again. So it's really never as easy as it seems. Despite we uh, worked through the uh, updates examples they had on our webpage because we uh, had been lucky and had some evaluation boards that fitted. Uh, we tried that out, it worked all fine. And then we started to integrate all the examples. And that's what they are, examples. Not fitting to our purpose in some places, not having been tested in any other context than the example. Uh, still, some of us were somehow reluctant to go away from their code because, okay, if they update and everything, all the trouble we will have. Uh, at the end, we needed to dig deep into it and change it in order to make it fit. Next things, not all things were 
examples somewhere, things were called libraries. So you would assume a higher maturity. Uh, sorry to disappoint. Uh, we had to dig deep into that stuff in order to make it work and work together because that library was using that version of free autos and that version of the logging stack, uh, which is not compatible with the logging stack used by the other example and the other library. So lots of fun around there. Yeah. And at the end was crucial for our success that we have good connections there and really could talk to the developers and the support there, not first level, I think, uh, there to dig into some certain internal config files never intended to be adapted for any integration purposes in order to make this work. Okay, then uh, let's come to our conclusion. Yeah, so our conclusion today, and Oli was interested in that, <laughs> to hear about that. So sorry to say that we had another look preparing this talk. There's not too much progress, neither at Riot and not at uh, Azure. They have some documentation public now, and it's probably going to be powerful what they offer, but it's still maybe public better one and a half year later. So the answer is pretty close with the experience we have. We would again stay away from Riot, sorry to say. But <laughs> I would argue, or I think as, a, uh, as uh, thinking about these things, um, we as a community should actually ask ourselves, do we, want, uh, do we want more commercial adaptation? Because from my point of view, if you take a look, at did something do something with Riot and AWS or Azure? It's basically very, very, very kind of hacky examples out there. And I think we could uh, pull things into the direction of commercial usage by simply not ignoring the large ecosystem or more like by providing um, some sort of rudimentary support like third-party integrations or stuff like that if we want this this is basically the question uh, we have to answer ourselves but this this might be the way to go for more commercial adaptation because those systems are often driven by the website by the back end side of things and don't get me wrong this year we had uh, the challenge to reach out to reduce our power consumption on that device which was lowest priority last year uh, and we went for free autos tickless and that went very well and then I noticed hey there's something which is called a tickless scheduler and riot too so let's have a look um, very interesting stuff uh, unfortunately not too much of information available on that on an easy google search at least uh, but highly interesting we also have that exchange at lunch thanks for that highly interesting what can we do with the power management in that case, it probably needs to uh, have a high number of devices, also huge success for that startup company until they have more money to go into that space. Yeah, but I'm, I'm curious what's going on there and would also be curious to have another look at that uh, in a pretty similar situation on Riot. What about energy consumption? When it's probably higher on the priority list. So thanks okay. for listening at that moment in time. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, I have to wait. But I'm I'm here uh, for the entire summit. If you want to discuss those topics or want to know anything else about we do, just approach me. Any questions? Questions, somebody? Question? Now, how will you answer? Now that I have the microphone, how will you answer? <laughs> I take it back. Um, so, all right, there we go. Um, um, so I heard a bunch of things and uh, I, I just don't want to repeat them. I heard about secure boot, Yeah. right? I heard about um, communication issues, right? Errors and other stuff like this that going out to the cloud. Then I heard about integration with the cloud. And then I thought I heard at the end was over the air update in the problem of how to host it. Like it wasn't the doing it, it was the 
who's going to host the update. Is that what I understood? Um, we basically identified things that drove the effort compared to the out of the box solutions that was answered by AWS. So some parts were driving the effort, but uh, we could have done those, but it came basically at a cost. And, and the thing that killed Azure for you was the lack of the update, it was the OTA, it was the lack of the OTA. No, it was it was actually the better state. <laughs> well, well, the better state of the OTA. Yeah. The fact that the update, the update is what 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 did did it did them in, the Azure in. So yes, that was the, the KO for, for Azure because they didn't offer anything out of the box. At that moment in time on our research, we, was, we were not sure that we would find any better solution. So if nobody else would have offered something, we probably would have fallen back to Azure. Actually, I don't know. Oh. And it was also about to integrate it. And at the first price, we didn't know that we needed to implement seven interfaces to get that auto agent up and running. Yeah, so that's not a too easy task to do. There's a question from the chat, um, from I think from Hannes, um, whether MCU boot uh, would be an option, whether you, MCU boot is supported by Riot. So I don't know if it's the question that you, know, you can answer, uh, or probably more someone from the audience. Honestly, I would say this is more or less an answer from a, uh, a question from a colleague, but I would say um, we had, due to the hardware, a uh, fitting solution to actually drive this by ST because they have their own bootloader and their attention how to update that. And so, um, yeah, the, this seemed to be the obvious way to go, actually, as far as I know. But since <laughs> I was not involved, Peggy, maybe you can say something. Does anyone know about MCU boot with, with Riot? Has anyone tried this? Okay, so apparently working. <laughs> yeah, um, thanks for the talk. Uh, my, my question would be like, how much were you looking at like established cloud providers to provide this service? Like in the question of like even now if we would build this, if the stack or the network stack would work, if we could connect to cloud, if there was like some some infrastructure to do like configuration fleet management and the other side of the fleet management would also be something that might be self-hosted or hosted by some smaller provider. Would you have trusted that? Actually, we had a look at uh, one of those or at least one closer look, which from the feature side would have been perfect, which is Menda.io. Um, but uh, that's for that startup just too expensive per device. Um, I think we had another look, but only shortly at other solutions. Uh, asked, not unusual time pressure, forced us to not go into to depth in whatever many solutions that could be possible, but we needed to choose rather fast. I mean, I, I was just a bit confused by the self-hosting. Oh, by the self-hosting, because uh, I mean, we are also, um, yeah, using um, suit for updates, and we are—it's just a, a core file server. That could. I think that's. So in AWS, getting this to run is basically uh, installing or configuring some policies, providing your certificate, and you're done. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's the truth of it. It's not, uh, or it, it is then afterwards, okay, you need to give the, uh, um, the software update image and it needs to be signed with the right keys and all this kind of stuff, but you can't get away from that with any solution, I think. And maybe if somebody would have been on board, uh, if we had known that solution a little bit better, it would probably have been an option. Yeah. 
but it was not in our case, given the situation we had. Yeah, so I think I will leave that to Simon. Yeah, I guess I guess this is where I come in. <laughs> okay, then thanks for your attention. Thanks for having me here in the Wolfstand. Thanks <laughs> for having us. Foreign agent. See you. <laughs>